Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Swap Quest. Man, this game. So, just your general set of options. You've got Adventure in Endless Mode. It's really not that... What's the word I'm looking for? Brawly featured of a game? Anyway, we'll just load into my game here, which has about 50 minutes into it. So yeah, about an hour, more or less. And we'll immediately get loaded into the game's world map. Now, we have a lot of options. But if it's anything like the last two times I got this option, because I believe I just beat the second boss, so if it's anything like the last two times, there'll be two levels and a bonus challenge. So, you can pick whatever one you want to go to, but at the moment we'll just head to the caravan, because that's where the majority of the game's start upgrades and stuff takes place. You've got a couple of things you can upgrade, not much. You've got your sword... And you've got your armor, which you can upgrade, and some can have different attributes, and some can also be just be stronger overall. So, I've got like the strongest sword I can get, and some okay armor. The problem with the game's armor and weapon system is that whenever you buy a new weapon or a new piece of armor in order to get like a higher strength on it, you lose the status effects and resistances that you have piled up on it. So... If I bought, say, the bottom, these two, two middle armors right here, I'd get these attributes, but then once I buy another piece of armor, which I will have to do eventually to get better stats, they, it'd just be gone. Like, all that stuff would be swapped out. So, I really don't find any use in buying anything from the Enchantress at all. It just seems like an out-of-place system. If, you, if they carried over your attributes to everything, to everything else you bought in the future, that'd be great. But it just doesn't seem to have any useful effect. You've also got... Abilities and every there's like five character classes in the game and they've each got their own main ability You can see that one up the top there and then there's also this one down the bottom here, which is a Active ability You can pay to increase the effectiveness of these abilities and you can also deposit money Which I really don't understand why you can do that because it doesn't seem like you'd be able to use use lose any of it anyway, but nevertheless we'll just yeah, that is the entire upgrade system by the looks of things. It's just, it's surprisingly simple and considering that the enchantment stuff is just completely useless if you plan on actually swapping your armor and equipment out, which is very useful. I just, I don't see the point. The other classes in the game, the four main stats of each of the classes are attack, defense, speed, and I can't remember what the fourth one is. But you probably want to pick something with a high speed. We'll get into why that is later. But at the same time, yeah, I just, I picked the Knight, which has the highest attack and defense with the lowest speed. And I think it was also the lowest intelligence. There's a Mage class, there's a Rogue class, which moves really fast. And then there's a balanced one. And I can't remember what the fifth one is. But yeah, there's a little bit of different gameplay. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually go back to earlier levels and show you the earlier levels. So I guess we just have to go into the new ones. We'll start with the bonus challenge level because it's a decent way to explain how the game works. Collect as many jewels as possible without getting hit by the fire. So, this is how the game works. If you've ever played any game like Pipe Dream, you'll know exactly how this game works. The idea is that you are moving around this area and you have to try and collect as... You have to try and collect as many gems as possible. How do you do that? God damn it. Well, not god damn it. I'm never going to try that again because you get the point. Those challenges can be infuriatingly hard sometimes. It's purely luck-based, so... I'm not that big of a fan of them. I usually just go to the normal levels. But yeah, the idea is if you ever played a game like Pipe Dream, we'll just pick this level on the left. Why not? It doesn't seem to really make a difference what level you pick. You get to pick between two levels and since you can't go back, I assume they make you go through over and over again for a bit of replayability, but whatever. So again, if you've ever played Pipe Dream before, it's a pretty familiar concept. The idea is you swap pieces of the path out and your character will slowly move along them. You can also make him stop and say reverse or go in the other direction. And when he reaches a intersection, you'll be given the option to move him in another direction. Pretty simple stuff, really. And you may notice that he's moving ungodly slow. Now, I am using the slowest character in the game because I thought the attack and defense would be a good bonus. And it is. Just more annoying is that you just you move so slowly even with a regular character like you saw back on the save on the loading the save screen that I had back there I did as a matter of fact lo um, load up a new game or should I say start a new game 
to... Oh, it's a mimic, is it? Yep. I started a new game just to see how fast the... Just to see how fast the other character classes worked. And it was about the same speed. Like, not entirely the same speed, but it was... It's just ungodly slow no matter who you pick. That's my biggest problem with this game. Games like Pipe Dream are fairly slow to begin with. It's just kind of a... It's just something that's built into the cult... Um, to the, to the culture? No, something that's built into the game's design. And... Some people might want me to forgive it for that, but I honestly can't. I just... I hate games that are slow paced, especially games like this, because just allow me to explain what the problem was. We had one of three challenges, and if you finish these challenges, you get gems for it, obviously. And as you can see here, finish the level in under eight minutes. Eight minutes seems like a really, really long time for a puzzle game, honestly. Especially one that's on a portable platform like the Vita. It just seems unnecessarily long, even at the best of times. Better pause his movement. You can swap the positions of gems by swapping the squares they're under. It's kind of a neat trick. But yeah, the main idea of the levels is just to go... Is to find your way through to the ends of the level. Collect as many gems as possible so you can get some upgrades going on. And... Just, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's also combat to be had if you've been paying attention. And the combat is... Very simple. I imagine it'd be a little bit more difficult if you're working with one of the characters that has basically no physical defense. Uh, sh shit. Was I supposed to bring forth a plank or something? Because I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to get across here now. Because I can't swap anything. Oh, this is just peachy, isn't it? I have to wait and see if a bloody plank shows up, but I can't see any because of this damn fog. This game does have, like, a gimmick on every single level. Like, there was a level previously where you end up as... You end up in the middle of a burning city and there's houses everywhere. There's a level where... Oh, God, I'm trying to remember now, but my brain is not working with me. The last level I played was in the middle of a cave and you had to destroy these crystals in order to give yourself light. Seriously, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Like, I know, I, there were planks before, I saw them, just... Now I appear to be completely and utterly stuck. Oh. It just knocks you forward, okay. That's a little strange. I haven't actually failed on this game yet, so you might wonder why that was a little bit odd, but yeah. So yeah, the combat in this game is also fairly simple. You literally just wander into the enemy and just hurt them because that's it. And there are both your passive abilities and I also do have the active ability, which I will show off once I get the opportunity, but knowing this game, that's going to take a bloody while, isn't it? Because this entire game is just so slow, like... Just, as someone who plays a lot of action games, this pace is just intolerable for me. Like, some of you might find this to be more than adequate, but me, I can't bloody stand it. It's just so ungodly slow. Even with the faster character, it takes ages just to finish a level, and it just seems so arbitrarily slow. I'm just sitting here waiting for stuff to happen most of the time, because... Building the paths ahead is fairly easy. It just... It's just waiting on the... Game to catch up. Like, a fast forward button would really help matters here. You can actually use buttons in this game, by the way. And the button controls do work. I just prefer using the touchscreen because it's more convenient and it's quicker. That's basically all there is to it. So, like, why not use the quicker, more convenient control scheme? And it's all it's an alright game. Like, it's really generic. Like, the plot is simply your father killed something, the thing that he killed came back, and now you have to just, like, continue on yet. And you just have to continue on with the, um... Ooh, special gem. I need to go get the special gem. And you need to go and find the crystal that he sealed the evil beings in, and the evil beings are called the Horde for some reason. And you just 
yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> There's a very thin story, but I do like the game's... I like the idea that every level in the game has a neat little gimmick to it. There are, there are more levels and they do have more gimmicks, and I will try and show you one if I have the opportunity, but... I mean, at the rate this game moves, it's just stupid slow. So you end up just being like, Oh man, just move it! Move it! I'll just cast Charm and then... Well, not Charm, Shout. As you can see, I do a lot of damage. This probably would be a fair bit harder if you were talking about, um... Yeah, you do level up and you do gain more abilities as time goes on. And I've gone and gone confused. Go back the other way. Thank you. You do gain abilities and stuff, and you level up as time goes on, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. At least that's, at least that's what I think. Like, sure, it is... You do... You do... It does make a difference, obviously. If you don't level up, and if you don't keep your stats upgraded, it probably will make a difference, and you probably will, will get the shit kicked out of you. But, at the same time, it's not too difficult to do that, so it really doesn't make that big of a difference in the long run. It really isn't that bad of a game. It's just so ungodly slow, and there's, as far as I'm aware, there's no fast-forward button. God, even if you press select, it's just... I didn't even realize it did that. It just shows you the controls. Manual, does the manual even say that? Like, I looked in the manual before, I didn't see that, but then again, this might, might have just been me being blind. I'll use the button controls for a while, because why not? Go back down there, please. I'll swap that out. Continue going down there, please. Thank you. Uh, we'll put this in there, and then we'll just... Just, yeah, you see the problem. It really is just waiting for... Waiting for the game to catch up to you, even on the slowest character. It's... Whoop, I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Go back along there. Also, I just ran out of time on my last quest, so... Yeah, it looks like, unfortunately, I will not be getting any of the quests done on this level, but... Ah, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, go back that way. Where's... This'll do. Go back that way. Go back that way. <laughs> I just... I... I'm having trouble coming up with things to say just because the game's so bloody boring. See, th now there's the exit, so all we have to do is walk across it, basically. So if I just get this set up properly, I can get this done fairly quick. There are boss fights, but the gimmicks are usually really simple. Like, the two boss fights I fought, one was try and get the boss to land on his own bomb so he stuns himself. The second boss was stun him with water by making him charge at it, and then... Stun with water, make, making him charge at it, and then just keep, go and get an attack in. It's relatively simple. So yeah, now, now if I go back, I can go do another challenge. And let me guess. The challenge is avoid the sirens. Oh, how did I know? It's actually fairly easy to beat when you're just using the right analog stick. It really isn't that bad of a game. Swap Quest is not a bad game. It's just intolerably slow. Like, a fast forward button really would have given it a bit of a leg up, but... Because, I mean, even the... Even the most... What's the word I'm looking for? The most... Eldest of pipe games. Like... When I was young, all I had was a Windows 95 computer, and the Windows 95 computers usually came with something along the lines of 1,001 games on a single CD, and they were usually just, you know, like tiny pieces of crap. But even they had bloody fast-forward buttons. This game not having a fast-forward button just makes it really, really slow. And I honestly do like the concept, and they do do a fair... They do do. 
they do a fair bit with the idea of, you know, making different environments to suit a puzzle game along these lines. It's just... So slow. And I know I'm harping on it being slow, but... That's the only thing I can harp it on, because it's competently designed, it's a fair bit of fun, it's a li It isn't very complex, admittedly, but I mean, it's a port of a mobile phone game, I'm not expecting much more... I'm not expecting much other than that, but it's just so ungodly slow that I just, I can't stand playing it for more than like 10 minutes at a time, which is probably a bad thing since I played it for like 45. I mean, I can see this being fun if you only did it at like a level at a time. That, that would be, that would be reasonable. But yeah. Me, personally, cannot get into this. Not one bit. Can you get into slow-paced puzzle games that have a decent idea? Well, not so much a decent idea. as a decent variation on an idea with a lot of variety in it. Then you'll probably be able to get into this one just fine. Me, personally, I can't bloody stand it. It's just... So slow, and yeah, what am I doing? That's not gonna work. All right, back up that way, then. Hurt up, hurt up. Oh look, I swapped a bunch of tasks. So let me guess, that got me a trophy. Um, I'm probably gonna want to avoid that whirlpool. Can I tap on that? No, I can't. But I can swap that there, and then I can swap this to here. So you just no fast forward button. It's infuriating. Send him that way just to grab those gems and then I'll send him... Oh, those are the waves. Yep. Don't get hit by a wave. At least the... Oh, it actually changes the layout. That's neat. But yeah, the variety really does work wonders for it. It's just so boring. You spend too long in each level and is just... God damn. See, like, we're only a quarter of the way through this level at the moment. It's just... Seriously, fast forward button. If they patch this game to add a fast forward button, I could probably recommend it to anyone who even remotely likes puzzle games. Because it is surprisingly good. It just, it needs a fast forward button so badly. The day they add a fast forward button is the day I say, alright, this is probably worth buying for pretty much anybody. Because despite the game's weird upgrade system that seems to de-incentivize getting status effects and status and not not status debuffs, um, just like um status protections on your equipment and just all of that silly stuff, it's still fun to play and it's got a lot of variety and a lot of imagination in it, like a bloody pirate ship there and bloody pirate ship I'm taking down with a sword, but we won't pay too much attention to that. It's interesting. It's just slow. Patch in a fast forward button. Also, the music isn't really anything special. As you can see, I've been blinded and... Yeah, when you're blinded, you can't hit shit. And there is a hard difficulty, which make th makes things, well, harder, obviously. Damn it. And there goes that gem. It's probably used for like a good ending or something. Oh, shit. And I only just passed the halfway point, so yep, yeah, no. <laughs> Can't do it, it's just... Fast forward button. That's literally all this game needs to be something that's well worth picking up. It's... Launching in the next store update for both North America and Europe for $7.99 or $7.99 euros. US dollars or euros. That's that's your price like all around. If they patch a fast forward button, absolutely pick it up. Otherwise, avoid unless you're a big fan of pipe dream puzzle games with no fast forward buttons. This has been Blue Maxima and I'll see you all next time.